let's do the closest thing that a group like this could do in terms of a speed round. I'm going <laughs> to go through a couple of other ideas. I just want to get the, what are you thinking about this? Can we say anything positive about resveratrol? No. Rich? No. no. Why does this thing not die? Why is there still a hundred different resveratrols being sold on Amazon? Why do I still get people asking me, do you take resveratrol? Should I be taking resveratrol? It has a good PR team. <laughs> I think it's really hard to prove something doesn't work, right? So once it gets in the consciousness as, as improving health, I mean, even in the longevity field, Jesus Christ, I was saying the resveratrol stuff was garbage for 10 years before people believed it, right? Now everybody believes it, but it Apparently takes a really not. long time. <laughs> well, <laughs> at least in the aging field, like I think if you went, like you never see, you never see people studying resveratrol in the, the aging field anymore. I think if you went to a conference and asked scientists, what do you think about resveratrol? You'd get the same answer here with maybe one exception. Um, <laughs> but I think, I think it takes a really hard- Just to, one exception. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a long time to um, Bad change. ideas don't die hard. That's right. And that's true in the scientific literature. And it's, tr and it's especially true when there's a profit motive to continue selling this stuff. And like, I'm not 100% convinced that there are no health benefits from resveratrol. I'm pretty convinced it, there's no reason to believe it affects the biology of aging or is a longevity drug. But I can't say for sure that nobody would ever benefit from any dose of resveratrol. Yeah, but we, we, we couldn't say that about anything. I right? agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, we could say that if you were force fed the highest fat diet in the world, such that your liver in, encroached on your lungs through your diaphragm, isn't there a chance, Rich, that under that situation, resveratrol <laughs> might help? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Wasn't that the one and only one experiment that worked? Yeah, the famous experiment, which was published as uh, resveratrol, the first drug ever found to extend mouse lifespan. It turns out that the mice die because um, they were on a 60% coconut oil diet, and it's poisonous uh, to the extent that it causes the liver to fill with fat and compresses the thorax so that they cannot inhale. Three or four papers later, they published as a, an obscure paragraph in a discussion section on a paper. Uh, Pearson was the, the first author of the second paper that, uh, oh, by the way, all these mice on the coconut oil diet, finally, we've looked at them. They're all dying because of lung compaction due to uh, expansion of the liver. Um, so the notion that their drug had slowed aging because on the 60% coconut oil diet, it temporarily extended lifespan was due to the prevention of this extremely bizarre phenomenon. I, I just cannot get enough of that story. And uh, well, it's and, all and documented all the, in, no, the, no, no, in the I, literature. I believe yeah. I know it won't. I mean, two separate papers. All right, let's have a word on NAD, NR, NMN. Uh, Steve, what is your point of view on this? Well, the current state of evidence, I, I'm, I'm skeptical. It's one of those things that makes a great deal of conceptual sense, but the evidence at this point is not very compelling. And we have the ITP evidence that is, I think, the strongest. Uh, and there was Strongest there. negative evidence. Yes, yeah. yes, okay. yeah. Just to make it clear. I assumed that <laughs> people knew that. I guess I should. Okay. Yeah. So. And is it your view, Steve, that, well, this stuff probably does not extend lifespan, you know? But maybe there is some other health span benefit out there that has just not been studied. The right experiment hasn't been done. It hasn't been powered correct. You know, pick your favorite oh, yeah. excuse. I, I, I think NAD is a is, is very, very interesting molecule. And I don't think we could uh, throw out, you know, manipulating NAD yep. as something that could be important for aging. I just don't think the evidence is there at this point. Do you think if you're going to manipulate it, you would have to do it with really, really high intravenous doses, or do you think you could achieve those levels using oral precursors? That I don't know. I will express complete ignorance on that. Matt, what is your point of view on all of this? Yeah, well, I think the way you framed that, that question to Steve is indicative of why it's so hard to disprove something, especially when there are people out there who have money to make who really want to want to you know make the case that you should buy this stuff. Because it's always possible that there's some some way that this could be beneficial. Having said that, NAD, you know, like Steve said, central 
molecule in thousands of chemical reactions, really important. Good reason, I don't know about good reason, some reason to believe that NAD homeostasis declines with age, like lots of many other things. So it's plausible that if you fix that, you can get benefits from it. The data is decidedly mixed, both in the literature, uh, preclinical literature and in people as to whether or not boosting NAD increases lifespan, improves health span. Um, so I think there's lots of issues here. What, might... What's the most positive data you would point to? Well, for lifespan, the original study by Johan Auerx's lab, where they started treating, I think at 20 months of age, was published in Science, I believe, um, showed an effect that was reasonably good sized, except the controls were short lived, which is a different issue. Yeah, it's yep, a different yep, issue, yep. right? Now you see a lot of, there, there are a, a, a number of cases where something was reported to increase lifespan when the controls were short lived. And then when, when the study was repeated and longer lived controls, you didn't see an effect. So I don't know why they, I don't know why there was a difference between that study and the ITP, but that's probably the best case you can point to. There's studies in C. elegans as well that where, where NAD precursors increase lifespan. So there's evidence out there. And again, it's a plausible, the biology is plausible. Um, but then I think when you talk about the precursors, you know, it's even more complicated than maybe boosting NAD could slow aging because can you get the right doses in people. You talked about bioavailability. Is there any difference between NMN, NR, niacin, nicotinamide? In when you take it orally, the data suggests that it all gets broken down to niacin in the gut. So why are people taking you know seventy dollars NMN things or when NR? Can... Yeah, why are people selling it? The, the people who are selling it, who some of them are scientists, dodge that question. I mean, it's it's complicated. I don't personally believe there is enough evidence to to think that NAD precursors as they are being marketed today are likely to benefit most people. Some people, probably people who have um, conditions of dysregulated NAD could get a benefit. I don't think there's any difference between the, the various molecules that are being marketed right now. And there's at least one study in mice that giving NMN to aged mice causes kidney inflammation and potentially kidney pathology. So there's, you know, I'm not saying NMN's dangerous, but when you try to weigh the risk reward, you know, if it if it causes kidney pathology in aged mice, at least at high doses, could it do the same thing in dogs or people? Yeah, it could. Um, and it bothers me, particularly in the companion animal space, that people are marketing NMN for people's pets when they know that it might cause kidney disease in people's dogs and cats. That's problematic to me.